Hi everybody, before we get started on the topic of this particular video, which is helmet standards, uh, I wanna make sure you know that if you're watching this on YouTube, in the description box down below, there's a link to a Dropbox. And in that folder, I've put PDF copies of the DOT, the ECE, and the Snell standards. These are publicly available documents. There's no problem there. Uh, you can go to a lot of different places and find them. I just thought it would be convenient to have them in one spot. And then additionally, I put in a spreadsheet that I've used through the years, I've developed through the years, that just is a comparison of the different standards and, and what kind of energies, uh, forces they require you to be able to defend against and uh, which types of tests. Not all, not all three of those do exactly the same tests across the board. So that's available for your reference. Uh, if you're watching this on some other uh, media, then please visit youtube.com slash ls2helmetsus. You'll find this video there and, and you'll be able to get that info if you'd like to have it. So uh, many of you know me, my name is Phil. I've been doing videos for the company I work for, LS2 Helmets, for quite a few years. Uh, but you'll also notice that today I don't have any LS2 gear on. And the reason for that is um, this video, this discussion is really strictly from my personal point of view on standards. Um, when I'm out and about in the, I'm in the motorcycle industry, I, I travel quite a bit. And I'm often amazed at what I hear, uh, concepts that people have, uh, ideas that they've picked up about the different standards that are often just not correct. And it's one of those topics that you could you'd probably start a bar fight over uh, because people get so passionate about their, particularly, their particular favorite of the standards. So um, again, my opinion, but I want you to know where I'm coming from. Uh, I've been in the motorcycle business since about 1976. I started specializing in safety equipment in about 1990 and in motorcycle helmets in 2000 and forward. Uh, I've worked with some of the best labs in the world, uh, helmet technology labs in the US, Asia, and Europe, uh, including the best of the best where you have to put little uh, tape over your camera on your cell phone because it's all top secret kind of stuff. So uh, I've developed helmets from an idea all the way through to final production, including one that made it to the, the grid at MotoGP. Uh, basically what I'm saying is I've got a pretty good handle on motorcycle helmets and the standards. So um, to begin with, I wanna make sure that we understand a few things that, that uh, the standards are, re the requirements for standards here in the US. Any helmet that is gonna be sold as a motorcycle safety helmet has to meet the DOT standard. And uh, there are some misconceptions there. There, are, I hear it said all the time that it's a voluntary standard. Absolutely not true. If you're selling a helmet here, you're required by law to make sure that you're meeting or exceeding that standard. Um, at, at my company, just for reference, when, when our lab is satisfied that we've met that standard, we then send it out to one of the two labs here in the US that independent laboratories that the DOT uses when they do random sampling. And we have them verify it before we start selling it. Now, we already know it's gonna pass. We know what, what the limits are, but we want to get that verification. And in fact, those, fa the, excuse me, those laboratories' job is to try to fail us. They're, they're looking for where we made a mistake. So DOT is a great standard. If anybody who says it's not, I, I hear all the time, oh, it's only DOT. Man, it's a great standard. If, if you meet DOT and have that on your head, uh, you have a pretty good uh, state-of-the-art product that, that should do a great job under the vast majority of controllable circumstances. Um, ECE is among my favorites for other reasons. Uh, ECE has a very strict requirement that the method of getting it approved is uh, really strict. You have to submit a certain number of helmets for testing. There's a very structured method of testing those helmets and then after every so many, you have to resubmit and test them again uh, to make sure that you're still staying with the standards. Snell is an independent organization where DOT is a government, US government organization. ECE is a European government organization. Snell is an independent group of, of people that have gotten together and probably forgotten more about helmet safety than you and I might ever know. Great group of people and have really done a, a tremendous service to the motorcycle industry. They update their requirements every five years, and uh, if you are a manufacturer and you want to have a Snell sticker inside your helmet, you have to submit it to Snell and have them test it and meet their, their strict guidelines, and uh, then you, you can certify it as a Snell-approved helmet. So, 
we've got these three standards and, and one person says one's the best, another says the other's the best. Uh, people talk about one being too hard, one you know being softer and, and all those kind of things. Well, let's start with the, the topic that is most often discussed and that's the energy that any given helmet needs to absorb. Uh, the DOT has a maximum G-force requirement of 400 Gs. With uh, ECE, it's 275 Gs, and Snell has 275 Gs, except for their two largest head forms, which they reduced to 264 Gs. Now, what, why? Uh, in Snell's opinion, the, the largest, two largest head forms are heavier and have more mass. And mass is one of the things that you're measuring when you're looking at kinetic energy. It's mass and velocity. Those are the two things. And there's a formula that I won't bore you with at the moment. Uh, but at any rate, um, that increased mass increases the ultimate end energy. And in Snell's research, they determined that 264 G's reduction is enough to offset the additional mass of those two largest uh, head forms. Okay. so. DOT, 400 Gs, and I've already told you that, that DOT is a great standard, and in the vast majority, you know, nothing is going to handle absolutely every circumstance. It's impossible. We just can't do it in, in anything in humankind. But uh, that standard has saved a lot of lives through the years. So 400 Gs is, is a reasonable amount of energy for a motorcycle safety helmet to, to handle. Um, the other two, we're gonna call them 275, even though I've explained that couple of the models at, uh, at Snell are a little bit lower, but we'll just say 275. Well, if you have a helmet that's DOT approved and also meets either of those other standards, it has to meet their lower G4 standards. So that's what we would consider to be a softer helmet. You know, it, it mitigates the energy, uh, disperses it even more and reduces what actually ends up hitting the human head. Um, so if you have a DOT and ECE approved or a DOT and Snell approved helmet, you kind of have the best of all worlds because uh, DOT requires penetration test. ECE requires uh, a test on the buckle to make sure that it's not going to inadvertently come apart. Uh, that you know, so each of them have their own things that they test that the others don't. The crossing of of any of the two, DOT and ECE or DOT and Snell, really give you kind of the best of all worlds. Um, the standards are the standards, and you know, being in the helmet business, we tell our best story and tell you why ours is better. Well, within the standard, there's a range, and if you know enough about it, you're, you're going to know, I'm talking about an energy range, uh, you're gonna know where it hit within that range, and you're gonna look at the curve, the duration of maximum impact, and that kind of thing. So, in a sense, you can do a better job within the standard than others, but all the standards are pass-fail. It's that simple, you don't get graded. Um, you either make it or you don't. So, if you pass, you passed. And if my helmet passes DOT and yours passes DOT and other brands passes DOT, neither of us can say that one is safer than the other. And in fact, it's not a matter of DOT, ECE, and Snell, one being better or safer. They're just different. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions on the market. They're just different ways of getting to what essentially is the same end result, mitigating the energy that the human head and human brain get hit with. So it's a tough topic, but that's the fact. Um, now, again, within that, when I say, wow, this helmet tests really well, um, really well is passing the standard, but when I say it, I'm talking that those curves, those durations and maximum energies and all, they're well within the limits of, of where they need to be. So that's a lot of information. I don't want to bore you too long, but um, I'm telling you that all three of those standards are great standards. The blend of DOT with either of the other two makes for an even better helmet, in my personal opinion. Um, another thing that's important to know is that ECE helmets have been approved, as far as I know, by every sanctioning body in the United States. I often hear that, oh no, my local, you have to have a Snell approved helmet. Uh, probably not, unless it's just that particular track owner that has some reason that he thinks that, that that's what it needs to be. But if you compare the standards, which I'm giving you the information to compare, I think you're gonna see they're all pretty close nowadays. If you go back to Snell 2005, pretty substantially different from the current ECE standard. If you go to Snell 2015, they're much, much closer. How they arrive at that ultimate determination is an independent thing for each of the three, but essentially 
that's where we are. I hope you found that information somewhat useful and uh, I'm open to your comments. If I can help with any questions, I'd be happy to do that. Thanks for your time.